Welcome to the SCM32 lab pin configuration for the F303 J8 nucleovore. So for this video, we're going to focus on setting up and configuring the pins for the STM32 F303 K8 nucleo. If you have the L432KC board, disregard this video and watch that video. So from here, I have installed STM32 Cube IDE. I'm using version 1.61 1 or 1.6.1. If you're watching this video and you have a different version, that's perfectly fine. But I just want to be aware that you know which version I'm currently using. So first what you do is we need to create a new project. To do that, the easiest method is just going from File, New, and STM32 Project. I'm going to select that. Now, it might take a second, but a new uh, board selector or a, pin, a target selector should appear. So I have a new window. Now I'm going to select board. And now what I'm going to do is to reduce the options because there's many STM boards or development boards. I'm going to select the Nucleo 32. And that's because we're using the 32 pin configuration. There's other Nucleo boards that are 64 as well as 144 pin for larger um, footprints. But in this case, we're using the Nucleo 32. Now for the commercial part number, I'm going to type F303. Oh. 303 helps type the right number, K8, and I'm going to select that board. And that is currently the only board of that chip. So once you see that, you're going to go ahead and select the board and then select Next. Now I'm going to create a project, or name my project, I'm sorry, I'm going to select Part 1. For my purposes, I'm going to just use the name of the board. Now select Next. I'm going to leave my options as is as I have the latest version of firmware, and select Finish. An option will come up to initialize all peripherals with their default mode. I'm going to select Yes. Now, depending on if you've installed this for the first time, there might be an additional step where STM32 Cube ID is going to download the firmware. That might take a few minutes, so please be patient and let that complete. Once that's done, you should have the same options appear just as I do right now. So from here, I'm now on our pin configuration tool, and I can go ahead and I can see the pinout of the board that we're going to be using. So first things first is I want to configure my I.O. pins to match how I've wired them up previously in the breadboard. So from here, I'm going to go to PB3, I'm going to select it, and then go down to GPIO input and make that as my option. Next, I'm going to select PB4 and go to GPIO output. So again, if we if you remember how we've connected these pins on our breadboard, PB3 is connected to the push button, and PB4 is connected to the LED. So now that I've configured my pins, I'm going to go ahead and look at some more advanced configurations or more configurations in the GPIO. To do that, I'm going to go to System Core and then select GPIO. So here I can see the GPIO pins that I have currently configured. If I select my input, there's a few different modes, mostly for obviously input, there's only one mode, but if I wanted to, I can configure a pull-up or pull-down resistor onto that pin. Now we're using some external pull-up and pull-down resistor, so I'm gonna leave my settings as B. As well as if I wanted to, I can select a custom label or user label to that pin to make it a little bit more convenient. Next, We'll look at the output. So I'll select PB4. Now I can select the default value the pin starts. And right now I'm going to leave it set as low. There's an option if I want to is set it to high. The other option is there's a push pull or open drain. For now I'm going to leave it for the push pull. And as well as I can configure the pull up and pull down resistors kind of as I mentioned before on the input. Now the other option is there's a maximum output speed. Currently, a defaults configuration is low. I'm going to leave that setting as is. As we're just using with user, inter uh, user interaction of pushing a button, we have, no me we have no reason to use a higher or faster setting. So I'm going to keep it as low. And again, you can also set a custom label or user label if needed. I'm going to leave that blank for now. So now I've set up my GPL pins. I'm going to leave all of the default settings. I want to go over one more thing, which is the clock tree. So in STM32 cube IDE, we have this 
option of generating or configuring our clocks. So the great thing is that they allow us to uh, give us this graphical interface to look at it. Traditionally, in most systems, we would actually figure this out and manually set registers on how we want them. But in the cases of STM32, they give us a graphical interface. And in our, in our device, every part, we need some type of clock to drive the system. So in this case, we could configure different IOs, different settings, different options at different speeds, and a plethora of different things. In this case, we're not going to worry about changing or touching anything. They do give us a great tool. If there's issues, we make changes on our GPIOs. We may need to come here to resolve any clock issues, if there's timing or adjustments that need to be made to our PLLs or our MUXs. But for now, we're going to just leave everything as is. So next, I'm going to go to Project Manager. And if we wanted to make some more advanced configurations or a setting, we can make some adjustments, like changing the project name, uh, updating the code generator, as well as some a couple of more advanced settings. So for the purposes of though, I'm going to leave everything as the default setting. So now what we want to do is we want to generate code. So I'm going to go to Project, Generate Code, and select Yes. Now, this might take a second, so please be patient. And once you've generated code, you should go to your main.c file. And if we scroll down, we'll see that it's auto-generated some um, functions to configure I.O. Now, we have our main function. We have a how and nit, which is resetting all the peripherals and initializing our interfaces, as well as setting up our sysTick. And then as well as we're configuring the clock system, so similar to how the clock tree was configured before. We're going to initialize and configure our peripherals. We'll look at that in a second, as well as it configure initializes a UART or communication tool. This is actually, we'll go into greater detail in a later lab if you choose to do it. And then from here, we have our infinite loop. Now, those auto-generated functions, we can look here at the system clock config. This will match pretty much how we saw earlier was in the clock tree. To go farther down, we can see the UART. This is a type of communication. And as you can see, we can leave everything as, we are going to leave everything as is. We can do more advanced settings with that pinout configuration. And we'll actually do that in a later lab if you choose to. And finally, we have our GPIO. So this is going to be those GPL pins that we were looking at before. We can see we have PB3, which is our input. We've configured it as we talked about earlier, we discussed. And as well as we have PB4. Now, one thing I do, I want to point out is there's some additional functions on how we handle air handling, as well as some other things. But for the most part, it's configuring and setting up the pin as we saw in the pinout. So it just makes the tool makes things a little easier or else we'd have to manually do all these steps ourselves. So that's it for the pin configuration for the F303K8 board. Please look for the additional videos after this on how to set up the code and debug and run it. If you have any questions, please talk to your lab instructor and have a wonderful day.